I'm Russell Poynton from Edison. Uh, it's great to have uh, with us again today, uh, Steve Oliver, uh, co-founder and CEO of Music Magpie. Hello, Steve, welcome back. Good morning, Russell. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And so um, you've just released your first half results for 2023. So could you just give us an overview of what's happened in the first half and talk about the, the, the changes in momentum that you saw through the period? Um, yeah, I mean, perhaps uh, it is a half, but to use a football cliche, it was perhaps a half up to halves. Um, I think, um, you know, we, we experienced some pretty tough conditions in that first couple of months, actually, in particular of, of the half. Um, you know, I've been in retail a long time, actually, and, and, and traditionally January can be a, a, a tough uh, month out there. And clearly economic conditions, with the macroeconomic conditions out there, I don't need to, to say remain tough for certainly all consumer uh, facing businesses out there um so it was pretty tough but actually we we got some good momentum into um q2 so the second half of, of our first half uh and um you know delivered a good uh solid ebitda performance uh over 40 percent up actually year on year on our quarterly performance from last year so saw some good momentum some real focus on on margin that i'm sure we'll talk about uh, a little more uh, and some cost savings coming through that we've implemented into the business. Um, there were a couple of moving parts within the gross margin in the first half, Steve. One, one is the increasing proportion of sales made through your own website, which are obviously higher gross margin than sales that are made through third-party sites. So could you just talk about how, you, uh, how you've done that and how you see that going, uh, going forward, please? Yeah, I guess traditionally we scaled our business over the years by selling mainly on third party platforms. And it, it was one of the great pivots that the business did over the last few years of bringing people more to the Music Magpie store. But last financial year, we slightly reversed that, became a little bit more agnostic, started selling more on back market. eBay was a long standing partner and Amazon. And then there was a release about a year ago now that we started launching and selling on Walmart. But the Music Magpie store in the UK and Decluster in the US has always been our channel of choice. Um, we do generally offer the customer a better deal on our store. We form a direct relationship with them, of course. So as long as we can pitch that marketing in, so it costs in at an appropriate level to bring people to our own store, we can make more profitable stores. And that's really helpful towards that overall gross margin equation to bring a higher percentage. So we were back up into the high 70% of our tech in the UK being sold on our Music Magpie store. And another positive driver was uh, the, the amount of product that you've, you're sourcing directly from customers. So could you just talk about what's influenced that over the last first, you know, last uh, six months, maybe 12 months or so? Yeah, I guess um, people who've, who've regularly heard the updates will have heard us talk about our smart drop kiosks that we operate mainly in, in Asda's, although we are starting to trial one or two um, other locations. I guess what we're seeing more and more, Russell, is, is people who are new to recycling their phone, who didn't know that getting cash for your old phone's a, 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 a thing. Um, and they walk past our kiosks in Asda and are participating in it more and more and we're up to nearly half the value of all the phones that we buy are now being sourced from a smart drop kia so that's driving our overall uh, percentage of, of product coming into the business as being higher from consumer than being bought b2b again it's it's helpful to the overall margin equation and indeed i have to say those macroeconomic conditions that are referred to perhaps they're encouraging people to seek out our service where they can get you know, a nice, fast, convenient, trusted cash for their old stuff, their old phone, their old consumer tech, and indeed still their legacy media products. So, yeah, definite uh, shift again back to more consumer activity directly through Music Magpie being bought and sold. And moving on to the rentals business, it's been another period of good growth for the rentals business, which has the obvious effects of, you know, the CapEx, which pushes the debt up. So could um, just talk about how your focus in the rentals business has changed in the first half and maybe how the rising interest environment has affecting your thoughts on the correct level of debt that you should be carrying? 
Yeah, I guess again, you know, longer term uh, listeners and viewers will have will have heard me talk about the REM cloth. We are very excited about it. We think it's really, you know, very transformational in that to medium to long term recurring revenue that we can create with a rental relationship. But we are mindful of getting that balance right between outright sales or indeed buy now, pay later sales, where we do still get the cash and the sale up front versus the longer term return of a rental and you know yes we are growing our rental book but actually we think it's really important for consumer choice and also to get the balance right with our revenue and as you say in terms of growing net debt we're mindful of the increasing uh interest rates i will just make a quick point on there which i think escapes one or two people when looking at that number as the net debt number continues to rise a large proportion of that is driven by buying those assets to put on our own balance sheet of rental assets. Now, of course, we're not planning to do this, but if we ever stopped rental, in th theoretically, we would have a lot of asset value out there that would come back in as cash. Um, so effectively, you know, that net debt equation, we never do sort of net off the, the value of those assets, but we have got a large asset base out there. So as well as the contracted income off that asset base that's out there, that you know, would flow in if we ever did stop in that theoretical world, we'd have the cash value of those assets. But we are mindful of that net debt number. We we understand the importance of it. And of course, you know, watching that interest rate. That's great, thank you. And perhaps moving into uh, more recent events, you, you, the second half of the year has seen the launch of the buy now, pay later offer. Could you just give some feel of what you think the attractions of that are to the customer, Music Magpie, and, and perhaps how important do you think it's going to be? Yeah, I mean, we have always had a buy now, pay later offer, actually, but we we um, disguised it rather well, actually. We were very front and centre with our rental offer, and it was only when you got to check out. Now, actually, what we're going to be doing is bringing that more prominent, more, more, more into the options at, on the product pages to make it obvious that the consumer has got that choice um, of either buying outright, renting from us, where you get the flexible free trade up at the end of the first year, or you can buy now, pay later. And I think that's really important. You know, it is a value seeking market out there in these tough conditions. More people are looking to refurbish devices to save money. Well, how can we help them further do that by spreading the cost? It is not a new concept, clearly, buy now, pay later. But it's something that actually, if we can present as a third option, really quite prominently, again, it helps us get that balance right between sales and today's sales and revenue recognition uh, and the rental alongside it. So, you know, more prominently brought to the front, but not a brand new concept to the business. But we hope it continues to, to build the momentum of both of those things. And finally, it's time to get the crystal ball out. Could you just talk about uh, what you think is uh, going to happen in the second half of the year, which is typically a, a more important part of the year for you from a financial perspective? Yeah, absolutely, Russell. It, you know, traditionally, it's a, it, it is into peak period, Black Friday in November, of course. It's always the biggest month of the year, so nothing new there. Um, but, you know, yes, we are mindful of the macroeconomic conditions. It does all feel a bit uncertain still out there in the wide world, but we're very focused on what we're doing. We've brought cost saving measures in. We've got that focus on, on margin in particular, losing perhaps those less profitable sales uh, out of the, the mix. Uh, we've got good momentum going into, uh, you know, we started well in the first bit of the second half, carried that momentum through that we got in, in Q2. So, yeah, we're, we're confident we're going to meet those expectations that are out there in the market, which, you know, it's we're very, very focused now on those two or three key elements in the business, driving margin, cost savings, uh, and delivering our, our number at the year end. Okay, that's very clear. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for your time again. Thanks, Russell. <laughs>